Well, the 18th of July is Nelson Mandela International Day, and this year marks 100 years since the birth of the struggle icon. Joining us now is Ndaba Mandela, Nelson Mandela's grandson, who wrote a book inspired by the legacy and memory of his grandfather. Ndaba, thanks so much for your time. I mean, in your book, you go on about the lessons from your grandfather. But as a young person living in South Africa now, I mean, what's the biggest lesson that you have taken from the man that he was? Well, for me, you know, it's about really how do we make sure that we have a successful future and that the development that's taking place on this continent is geared towards the right way, right? And that means looking after the youth. Uh, so for us, you know, through our foundation and the work that we do, we're all about empowering the youth to become at the forefront of Africa's development through education, through entrepreneurship, through technology and celebrating African culture, we believe we'll be able to really take this country and this continent to the next frontier. I mean, um, Daba, when you guys set up your foundation in 2009, you called it the Africa Rising Foundation. In fact, the whole world was calling Africa the rising continent. Yes. And subsequently, after that, now there are some corners in which you know Africa is regarded as the hopeless continent. So my question to you is, when you go out there selling this uh, narrative to the rest of the world, garnering sure. this project finance to the rest of the world to still keep its focus on Africa, what are they saying? Well, you know, to be honest with you, a lot of people do meet it uh, with uh, positivity. People are not aware. You know, when you talk to them and say, out of the top ten growing economies, seven of those are coming from African continent. They, they kind of step sure. back. When you say, this is the best place for capital investments and your return on those capital investments, you come to Africa. You know, they start listening to you. And you say, you want to go for holiday. Don't just think about safari, mm -hmm. but think about the tropical beaches of the east coast of Tanzania, Mozambique, Seychelles, Mauritius, etc. You know, people start, s you know, their eyes start opening up and they really pay attention to you. Mm -hmm. I've had many people, when I give them this information, uh, really interested to come and actually, you know, engage with Africa. It's that mm -hmm. people do not have the information that they need in order for them to focus on Africa. For sure. I mean, Endeavor, you are part of the Global uh, Citizen Festival that, uh, you know, made Twitter a buzz yesterday <laughs> uh, because of all the headline hitters who will be coming to perform in December. But of course, the initiative is a lot more than that. It's yes. about engaging uh, the youth uh, to engage actively in the economy and hold uh, some of the uh, people that are running it in some corners, they say, to the ground accountable. That so my qu uh, yeah so my question to you I mean uh, in let's let's start here in South Africa before we take it to the rest of the continent right sure. now young people are crying about jobs we've been told about entrepreneurship we just heard numbers saying that we're crying about access uh, to finance I mean as a as a young person yourself who is in business advice to some of those young people about how they can overcome these challenges well you know I, I find that a lot of young people do not have mentors you know, uh, mentorship is very good uh, when it comes to any project or trying to be a successful uh, business person or even in your career. Um, it's very good to have a mentor, somebody that can guide you, somebody who has experience. Um, you need to be passionate about the, 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 the industry that you're in. Do not do it because of a girl that you like or because your parents are forcing you to do it. You need to genuinely love what you do. Uh, because along the way, you will obviously come across hurdles. You will come across people that don't have faith in you or don't believe in you. Um, so you need to have people around you that believe you, who can support you and give you the guidance that you need in order for you to continue. Because And also failure. Make failure your friend. The more you fail, the more you learn. For sure. And you know, Nelson Mandela said, I don't ever fail. I either learn or I win. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about the perspective. Persistence pays, ladies and gentlemen, young boys and girls, persistence pays. If you're passionate about something and you truly believe in the, in the goals that you want to attain, then you have to keep at it because hard work and persistence does pay. For sure, and uh, I mean uh, persistence. I mean you can even relate that to uh, the struggle and the persistence of uh, the, the the people that we should thank uh, today for you wanting to liberate uh, the country. 
Let's talk about the continent. I mean, you have uh, recently made uh, remarks about how essentially the xenophobia here in uh, South Africa and how there's a, uh, people forget about how our continental brothers and sisters were so instrumental yeah. in our own liberation as well. How, how, is, how is Mandela's uh, legacy received across the continent and specifically amongst the young people? Well, across the continent, you know, they see him as the model leader. You know, he is the father of the nation, the father of democracy. Uh, the custodian of the constitution. But when you look at many African countries, majority of them, they do not have good leaders. They have leaders who want to stay in power for eternity. Uh, they have leaders who are using the, 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 the reserve banks as their personal pockets. Mm. Uh, there is no transfer of skills or empowering youth. So Mandela becomes that, that leader that everybody aspires to become mm. or aspires to having a leader like a Nelson Mandela. And uh, you know, our foundation will actually be uh, starting a, a, a leadership program next year mm. called the Nelson Mandela Leadership Accelerator Program, where we're going to be getting applications online where we want to take 10 young people between the ages of 18 to 35, young millennials, to bring them to South Africa, to teach them about the values of Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. number one, integrity, discipline, humility, serving your public, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, we ask ourselves, what are the key industries mm -hmm. that Africa needs to focus on in order for us to start realizing our road to independence? Sure. We say technology and education. Mm -hmm. We say energy and agriculture. We say healthcare and we say entrepreneurship development. Mm -hmm. So those are the key uh, sort of themes that the curriculum is going to be designed around when these 10 candidates come to South Africa. And we want to be able to push this for at least 10 years because our goal is to raise a, a, a new generation of Nelson Mandela-like leaders sure. who have the, the values and the principles and have a vision of where they want to be. For sure. And we want to obviously partner them with corporates. So the corporates, the first part is for them to come and, and do the curriculum. The second part is that we want corporates to adopt these young candidates mm -hmm. to have a three to six month paid internship. And when they finish that, they will return to their respective uh, communities to start their project that they applied with because one of their criteria will be um, in applying will be identify a challenge in your community and a potential solution. Sure. Right? And so when you return, the corporate will now not only be a mentor, but they will also be a source to assist you in mobilizing resources right. for that project. Because what we are saying is that we are not here to tell you what the problems are or the solutions. We want you to come and tell us yeah, what sure. it is, and then we will try to assist you as best we can through public-private partnerships to address those issues and make sure that there are projects being run on the ground, whether it's in remote areas, whether it's in city areas, but we are focusing on building the next generation of African leaders. For sure. And, and uh, obviously, to wrap up, I mean, uh, there is no um, perfect man in uh, this world. In fact, uh, the, with those who are religious will say even Jesus Christ was not a perfect man. Of course. So on reflecting on the, 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 the decisions in the life of your grandfather, and especially as right now in South Africa, we're grappling with the concept of inclusion into the formal sectors of the economy for young people, for women, and yes. the list yeah. actually does go on. In your humble opinion, what could your grandfather, your grandfather rather, have done better, or what should we be doing better to also perhaps uh, pick up from what he perhaps couldn't do? Well, I think uh, you know one of the things that we overlook sometimes is our own family unit. You know, um, as you know, Madiba sacrificed his own family for the greater good of the of the country. And so he was quite estranged from his family. And, um, you know, it was very difficult for him to reconnect with the family. Because when you look at young people, right, they get their inspiration, their stability, their inspiration. I mean, everything starts in the home. Sure. Starts in that home unit. The building blocks of, of them learning, of being able to, to have courage and confidence when they go out there to face the world. Mm -hmm. So we also need to be able to look after families and assist families to make sure that they are actually raising young leaders in a fashionable way, that there's a conducive environment uh, of learning that takes place at home. You know, many areas that are dealing with poverty uh, have a lot of social ills. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about 
substance abuse, you talk about domestic violence. You know, these are the things that they grew up with. So a lot of young black people are traumatized. Sure. You know, there's a lot of trauma in the black community that needs to be addressed, which is not really addressed. We send our kids out there to become successful businessmen. We say, yes, we've been traumatized by seeing your mother being killed by police. You know, just bury that, bury mm. that. Continue out there in the world, you know. And these things do not get addressed. And of course, they manifest later in their lives to a very detrimental effect to society. You know, so, you know, it's not always just about the finance, finance, finance and the bottom line. You know, we need to understand what are the other factors that create young, successful, confident men who will go out there and make our country and our continent proud. And it's all about a family. But Ndaba, thanks so much for your time. We will uh, leave it there. Thank that, of you. course, was Ndaba Mandela, who is Nelson Mandela's grandson.